Just like Get Out and Us, Jordan Peele's newest film Nope is packed to the brim with subtle foreshadowing and small details. Before you go out to see it a second or third time, watch this to see the things only true fans noticed in Nope. Spoilers ahead. Nope opens with a piece of scripture from the book of Nahum, from the Hebrew Bible, specifically Nahum chapter 3 verse 6. In the Bible's New International Translation, the verse reads as follows, I will pelt you with filth, I will treat you with contempt, and make you a spectacle. There are a couple of different ways to interpret the meaning of this verse in the context of the film, and some of them require a greater understanding of its biblical context. Nahum chapter 6 primarily deals with God's judgment against the Assyrian city of Nineveh, which is portrayed as a deeply sinful and debaucherous place at various points in the Old Testament. As a result, one way to read Jordan Peele's use of the verse is as a commentary on Hollywood and its role in modern culture. What's a bad miracle? Nope is a movie that deals heavily with the self-destructive nature of Hollywood how it can change people for the worse, and how it often twists trauma and tragedy into profit. Ricky Park uses his dark past as a source of income, and Holst ultimately chooses to die because he's so obsessed with his craft. Alternatively, the opening scripture could be read as a foreshadowing of the alien's attack, or simply as a commentary on the horror genre at large. Nope features a lot of references to aliens from the beginning, even before the flying creature makes itself known to OJ and Emerald. Jupiter's Claim, the Wild West theme park run by Ricky Park, evokes a galactic energy with its name alone. The film deals heavily with the territorialism of animals, with the monstrous alien ultimately revealed to have staked a claim to the Haywood Ranch. The name of Jupiter's Claim foreshadows that extraterrestrial territorialism before the creature ever appears on screen. Additionally, the sign that marks the way out of the back of the park reads, Out Yonder, which could be interpreted as a reference to space as well as a general cowboy phrase. Whether intentionally or not, it evokes the 1960s sci-fi anthology series, The Outer Limits, which, as a fan of The Twilight Zone, Jordan Peele is certainly familiar with. The first proper scene in Nope is a glimpse at the gruesome Gordy's home disaster, which is shown in more detail later on. While the full scope of what happens isn't clear at first, the Gordy's home scene features a bunch of little details that foreshadow the rest of the film. For starters, the actual chain of events at the Gordy's home taping parallels the alien encounter later in the film pretty directly. In both cases, a potentially dangerous creature is used to turn a profit by performing in front of a live audience. And in both cases, eventually, that creature becomes fed up and, as Ricky himself says in the film, hits his limit. The irony is only strengthened by the fact that Ricky himself orchestrates the second catastrophe with the alien, as he's experienced the horrors of Gordy's rampage firsthand. One of the more curious characters in Nope is Angel Torres, an ordinary tech store employee whose affinity for alien conspiracy theories brings him into the thick of OJ and Emerald's investigation. Angel comes off as a relatively frazzled person at times, but he's also clearly capable of getting the job done when push comes to shove. Perhaps that's because he has the benefit of a passive stream of income, or more specifically, a miniature crypto mining operation set up in his bedroom. After they escape from the alien creature and the Haywood Ranch, Angel brings OJ and Emerald back to his place for a debrief. In the background, you can see that he has a rack of what appears to be processors rigged up to his computer, with multiple fans blowing on them to keep them cool. Given Angel's tech-savvy nature, it makes sense that he'd try to make a little extra money via his own personal crypto mine. Five stars, Angel, five stars. Throughout Nope, there are numerous lines and visual touches referring to the eyes. OJ quickly learns that the alien is less aggressive if you don't look up at it, a trick that he learns from working with the horses. And yet, at the same time, there's an obsession with seeing things in Nope. The shot, the money shot, undeniable singular, the, the Oprah shot. OJ, Emerald, and the rest of the crew repeatedly return to the ranch because they need to get the perfect shot of the alien. Things only become more intense after Holst, the famous director from the beginning of the movie, is convinced to join their cause. Holst is obsessed with landing the impossible shot of the alien, to the point that he seems to nearly lose all sense after doing so. In the scene where Emerald first reaches out to him about their mission, Holst is seen editing black and white footage of animals, with many of the shots simply being close-ups of the creature's eyes. He then makes a reference to being famous, having all of the eyes on the world on you, being like a dream that you never wake up from. 
Clearly, there's some meta-commentary going on here, with Peel discussing both the optics of fame and the eye of the film director that he himself is. And, of course, M finally gets the perfect picture of the alien via the well camera at Jupiter's claim, which itself could be perceived as a massive, gaping eye. Emerald is first introduced on the set of one of Antler's Hulse's projects, where Emerald gets to deliver an extended sales pitch for herself and the Haywood Ranch. Where OJ clearly lacks any love for performance or public speaking, Emerald is a natural, and she quickly rattles off the entire Haywood Hollywood history, a history that she claims goes all the way back to the first motion picture ever. Despite Emerald's expert delivery, however, she does stumble at one point. And that man is my great-great-grandfather. Great. There's another great-grandfather. Later on, we see why Emerald gets the number of greats wrong. Toward the end of the film, Emerald is seen watching an old VHS tape featuring the recurring Man on a Horse movie. In the background, her father can be heard delivering the exact same speech word for word that she delivers earlier in the film. The reason Emerald makes the mistake is that she learned the speech by memorizing this particular recitation from her father, and because her father is one generation older, he only says two greats where Emerald should say three. In keeping with the old-school Hollywood films that inspired it, Nope has an extended opening credit scene that might be a bit confusing your first time through. The credits are displayed in what looks like a cave covered in billowing sheets with the mouth eventually giving way to the original movie of a man riding a horse. In reality, the opening credits take place within the mouth of the alien creature who terrorizes the Haywood Ranch. Because the alien is believed to be a spaceship for much of the film, this is an easy detail to miss. And yet, when the staff and guests of the Star Lasso experience are sucked up into the monster's maw, it's shown to be the exact same as the venue of the opening credits. OJ makes another allusion to the UFO's true nature following an early encounter with it, in which he tells his sister that he has to get back to work because he's got mouths to feed. If you know what to look for, these clues foretell the true nature of the alien before it's officially revealed. Though it would be hard to guess what you're seeing in the opening credits your first time through, nope. The two main characters of Nope grew up on their father's ranch and were taught the trade of animal wrangling, a skill that probably doesn't get enough love or respect in pop culture. Perhaps that's why Jordan Peele spends so much time in the movie emphasizing the importance of the job. Yes, OJ, Otis, and Emerald all work in the field of animal wrangling, but the film's endorsement of that work goes far beyond its protagonists simply being a part of it. For instance, the Gordy's home tragedy might never have happened if the animal wranglers on on set had been better prepared or more focused on safety. OJ's knowledge of animals also ends up being the key to defeating the alien as he realizes the trick of keeping one's eyes averted by reflecting on his time with the horses. By contrast, Ricky and Holst only seem to view animals as subjects of spectacle, with Ricky trying to use the alien's presence to turn a profit and Holst fixating more on his shots than on the animals themselves. In a way, you could say that Nope is one long cautious tale about the importance of treating all creatures with respect. Ricky Park has a rough time of it in Nope. Though he seems to be a pretty successful businessman, he's clearly haunted by the trauma of his experience on the set of Gordy's home. His secret room of memorabilia from the show is plenty creepy, and it features a few details that make it even creepier. For instance, the bloodied shoe from his presumably dead former castmate is displayed in an upright position just as looked to him from his hiding place during Gordy's rampage. Later, when the Star Lasso experience is revealed, there are even more remnants of Ricky's horrifying experience. The alien costumes that he has his children wear for the act look strikingly similar to chimpanzees, which is an interesting choice given Ricky's history with the animals. And of course, there's the fact that he invites his scarred former Gordy's home co-star to his alien sideshow, only for her to be swallowed up by the creature along with him. Few shots in modern cinema are as iconic or as frequently referenced as the famous motorcycle slide shot from Akira, the 1988 cyberpunk anime masterpiece. The shot has been parodied and outright mimicked numerous times over the decades since the film was first released, and it shows up once again during the climax of Nope. While racing away from the alien on the paparazzi's journalist's bike, Emerald performs the iconic slide, racing away from the camera and skidding to a stop. In addition to being a reference to Akira, the shot is also the payoff to a line from the beginning of the film. 
When Emerald is giving her speech to the crew of Hulse film early on, she closes by pitching herself, mentioning that she does all manner of creative work around Hollywood and is always available. One of the random skills she mentions is that she rides motorcycles, which obviously comes in clutch during the final act. As the end of Nope approaches, the alien transforms from its traditional UFO shape into a much more abstract and bizarre creature. The saucer that it once was expands and billows into a massive flowing entity somewhere between a giant squid and a fitted sheet. The creature also reveals a mouth, eye, or something else entirely, which takes the form of a small square in the center of the alien's body. All in all, it's a baffling design, effectively conveying the otherworldly status of the beast. There are a few things worth noting in the alien's final form. For starters, its body takes on much the same consistency as the wavy tube men seen throughout the movie, referred to as sky dancers at one point in the film. It also seems clear that the mouth of the creature is meant to mimic the shape of a camera lens, which makes it especially ironic that it responds to anyone looking directly at it by consuming it. No wonder Ricky refers to the creature as the viewers. It's also worth noting that the creature's design seems incredibly reminiscent of Holland artist Theo Jansen's Strand Beasts with their wind-powered designs and eerie way of movement. From start to finish, Nope is littered with throwaway lines and visual touches that tie all the little things into the greater narrative. OJ mentions early on that the first film he ever worked on with his father was The Scorpion King, and that they brought a horse called Jean Jacket for the shoot. Later on, OJ names the alien Jean Jacket, and wears his Scorpion King crew hoodie into battle against it. In a way, he sort of becomes the rider in the old horse movie who he claims as an ancestor, racing on Tahol's crank-powered camera just as the black and white film races through the opening credits. No detail is left to chance. Angel wears a t-shirt that reads Earth over a graphic of a dragon and different phases of the moon. Even Hulse's awkwardly hilarious recitation of Sheb Woolley's The Purple People Eater seems to hold a deeper meaning. In a verse unheard in the film, Woolley sings, I saw him last night on a TV show. He was blowing it out, a really knocking him dead. Could this unsung lyric be a reference to the horrific Gordy's home scene? Maybe. And what about this line? They're just waiting for the perfect time to shove metal probes up our asses. On second thought, maybe not every detail in a Jordan Peele movie needs to be dissected so extensively, but when a director packs so much into every scene, it's hard not to look for all the little details that might be hiding there. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies and TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.